What's up, gang gang? Zephyr back with another NFG how-to on the Adventures Guild. Now, this one's for the RPG players out there who want more from the daily grind. Have you just started Wax and looking for something with cheaper entry? Sick of the constant CPU issues when you're trying to do another click? Looking at you, Alien Worlds? Um, looking for a project with a trusted developer within the Wax community and want a little bit of story to go along with that ROI? Well, like Goldilocks and the Three Bowls of Porridge, the Adventures Guild could be just right for you. Created by Stuck at 6pm and ran off-chain for a different kind of crypto experience, here's the lowdown on how to get started. Getting started with tag can be a little confusing at first glance, not knowing why there's all these skills, what the different types of weapons do, um, or what these loot chests are even for. Um, luckily enough for you, this video is going to explain everything. We're going to jump right in. We're going to start looking at some of these things. Um, first off, what I think everyone should do though, and what will be required to do if you want to play, is jump on over and join the Discord for the Adventurers Guild. So once you come in and once you've clicked um, to accept the terms of service, come on down into the bot commands here and link your honeycomb. So for those of you who have ever probably joined any project in the last few months, you'll notice that most games now require honeycomb validation on Wax. So it basically just links your wallet, allowing it to verify that you're a real person. Um, if you have any NFTs that give you any special roles or things like that in the Discord, in this case, it allows you to play the entire game. So it's very important to jump on in and get that honeycomb linked. That way it'll pick up your beta pass any of those weapons or things we just talked about um, and allow you to equip them in game and start using them so jump on over hit the accept on all of the terms of service head down to board commands and link that honeycomb and that's the first step to getting started right there so the absolute minimum requirements for you to be able to play tag would to be to come over to atomic hub here and buy one of these beta passes this gives you access into the game now it's selling for eight wax which is about two dollars so not too bad entry if you want to just jump on in and give it a go now you could have got these for free at digicon and things which is pretty awesome if you visited their swag booth which happened a couple of months ago um, but i highly suggest just giving it a try grabbing one um, and then heading back over to the discord now when honeycomb picks up that you have that beta access um, which usually takes anywhere between half an hour and an hour for it to do the scan you can head down and it'll unlock these new channels for you so you'll be able to see the start here which describes what um, what the game's about what it's going to do it'll also show you all of the commands and things that you can use in game which also looks a little confusing but it's actually very very easy and you'll see that when you head on down to game commands uh, which is where you actually play the game so that's right a hundred percent off chain through discord so if like i said before you've been sitting playing games you've only got a little bit of wax most of it's already staked to cpu and you find yourself constantly cupping up against those cpu errors well this lets you click all day to your heart's content without using up that precious CPU. So I really like that whenever I'm sitting there waiting on some clicks coming up, I can just head over here, do some clicks and not have to worry about it eating up all that CPU. Um, not only do you have the game to play, but you also get added into this cool um, game chat where people get to talk about what's going on. Um, you can suggest changes, you can show off things that you've found from the quest. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. Unlock some cool new chats for you to look at and we'll start looking at how to actually play the game with that beta pass. So we're sitting in game commands. The first thing we got to do to be able to start playing is type slash game. And like you can see when you start typing, it actually pops up for you. So those commands start to get a little less confusing just because it starts suggesting to them and telling you what it's actually doing. So like you can see slash game plays the adventurers guild. So if I hit enter and enter again, it gives me this pop-up here. Um, I have started playing before and grinded quite a bit because it was uh, quite fun when I was first starting. But they've recently released an update where you have to name your character and um, give a, a bit more backstory, so to speak. So um, I'll show you setting up from here. I waited to do this so that I could show everybody on stream. But you can see here the first box is the time zone so all of the quests will reset at midnight um, so if you select the time zone that applies to you which is an utc you'll see that um, it'll reset properly for you so 
um, for me it would be in australia you might be in singapore philippines the uk canada you know wherever you are you can set it to reset so that you know when your quests are going to reset um if you prefer you could set it to a different zone so if you don't want them to reset um at midnight for you and you were like oh i'd prefer for five you know you could pick a different time zone and you know that your quest will always reset then so i think that's pretty cool just to start off with not a lot of games allow you to choose when you want your quest to reset so that's pretty cool to start off with okay so once you've picked your time zone that you prefer so like you can see i've selected utc plus 10 so it'll reset at midnight every day for me you get to pick your pronoun for your character so this just helps tailor the quest text because you do get a little bit of story like i said um towards your character so if you've got a female mage running around blowing up all your enemies you probably don't want the text to be see saying oh you know you're a great man so you know whatever character you pick um, you can tailor your pronoun towards it. So I'll just pick he for now. Um, <clears throat> when you pick uh, he, then you get to pick your style of avatar. So obviously you can uh, pick male for he there. So once you do that, it gives you this pop up here. So this is always the trickiest part for any kind of cool character name. For me, I'll just pick another Zephyr because I just like being known as the same thing um, <laughs> everywhere, basically. I'll submit that. That'll put it in, and there you go. A nice little welcome message to say welcome to the Adventures Guild. So you've signed up your character, you've got everything in there, you're ready to head out and start adventuring. I'll click Main Menu, and it'll start to load up. So as you can see, this makes it a lot simpler for you to look around and see what you actually have in game and what's going on. Um, those commands make it look like it's a little tricky to navigate, but it makes it very simple that you have these little buttons here that you can just click. So if I clicked on my profile right now, it brings up all my details about my character. So like you can see, I'm a level 15 caster because like I said, I did grind a little bit when it first came out. Um, there was a double XP event on one weekend and I, I just went crazy. I just started clicking whenever I could. Um, according to my stats and what I've put my points into, because each time you level up, you get points to distribute into each stat to make your character stronger. I've gave myself 127 HP. I have 100 energy. And right here, you can see how many quests you have. So every day you have 13 quests. That's where that reset came into play. So as you can see, um, mines will reset um, in one day and 20 hours because I just started playing. So I have the 13 out of 13 to go. I have zero guild at the moment because I used it all before. And this is the stats that I was talking about. So you get your points to distribute. You do get base stats to start off with. But um, according to whether you're a caster or a warrior, you'll put your stats into different things. So whether it be health, power, intelligence, um, constitution, skills, speed, luck, charisma, um, whatever you want to put it into uh, will change how well your character plays according to what role you're playing. So like I said, it does sound a bit much at the moment, but as you're playing, it does get easier. Um, after that, you can have your equipment. So with your equipment, you can put um, armor on. You can see I have a training staff equipped because I'm a mage, which makes sense. Um, if I go down into skills next, um, this was the skills that we were looking at on the market before. So whether you're a warrior or you're a mage, you can get different skills. I just have the full Menorb at the moment, um, which was making it very easy for me to blast through things while I was questing during the double XP event. So that came in very handy. But you can just play with a basic attack. So like you see here, there is a Mage Bolt, which is your basic attack. So you don't need to go out and actually buy those skills. So like I said, to play, it requires only that beta pass. After that, you've got your professions. Now, I haven't um, done anything other than being a caster. Um, there will be more things coming in in the future, but you can choose from just being the base adventurer, which is what you start at when you first come into the game. A caster, which is, you know, a mage, a magician, you cast spells. Or a fighter, which uses the swords. Um, you go around and you do melee attacks. So I thought I'd try out caster on this playthrough. You can change periodically, but I thought I'd give caster a go for this one, and it's turned out pretty fun so far. 
Um, after that, you can get consumables. Consumables are just things that um, give you a little boost to your missions as you're going through. Um, yet again, things that you don't need to necessarily use, but come in handy when you are. So after you've had a look at through all your profile, checked out what you've got going on, head on back to that main menu and we can get to quest. Okay, so we're back at the main menu here. If you have gone and bought yourself some extra NFTs, some uh, if you know what you're going to be, like a mage or a warrior or whatever, you can head over into your inventory and you can start equipping those things. Um, if you click on weapons, say, and you're looking here, you can see that I have my um, level 2 training staff here equipped. So that's the asset ID right there. So if you were to equip that, what you would just type is you'd type slash E and like you can see it comes up with equip. And then it gives you the prompt for the asset ID. So if you head over into your wallet and just copy that asset ID from the NFT you want to equip, paste it in here and then hit enter, it'll actually equip it for you and allow you to start using it within the game because honeycomb and everything's all linked. So it knows that you, it belongs to you and that you can start playing. So if you haven't bought any NFTs, just head back over into the main menu here. And we'll start playing so as you start playing you'll probably want to start doing random encounters first unless you're uh, super confident um because quests are a series of encounters which means that it's gonna be more taxing on you whether it be um, your health or your skills that you need to use will be on cooldown and stuff etc um you may end up dying along the way now you don't lose anything per se um but you won't be able to complete that quest and so you won't get any bonuses at the end um so like i said when you first start you'll probably want to do these random encounters so if you click on random encounter it'll start to load and it'll bring you into a random fight with a random enemy so i have got myself a snow slime that's level seven you can see here this is my hp so i'm still at max hp because nothing's happened yet and my energy is half full so i can choose to use that mage bolt like i said that basic attack that you can play with for free if you have bought skills you can click this menu here it'll give you a drop down of all the skills available and this number here is how much energy they cost so if i was to do that right now without any any extra energy i would get two off before i didn't have enough energy left to cast it again but each time that you take a turn your energy refills a little bit um, so you'll get the text here that tells you what you've done to the enemy and what the enemy's done to you so i'll click full min orb which will use that skill you'll see here that i've used an electric attack it takes 13 damage it's launched a snowball at me and I've took five damage. So my HP has gone down just a little bit and its HP has gone down a little bit too. So if I wanted to use full Minorb again, it's now here for the quick select. Or if I wanted to change skill, if I had multiple skills, I could go back to that menu and pick a different one. Right now, I'll just hit it with a mage bolt to show you what the basic attack does. So like you can see, I just used the mage bolt. I shoot the elemental magic at it. It crits it, which is awesome. And it does 12 magic damage to it. So almost as strong as what that full Minorb just did. Um, it, launch, it launches another snowball at me. It starts to chill me and it does 11 magical damage to me. So like you can see again, my health's come down a little bit more and its health come down a little bit more too. But my energy's back up to 50 again. So I can safely go use that full Minorb again. Yet again, it's done some extra damage to me and I've done some extra damage to it. So if I just sit and click full Minorb now a few times, you'll see that the HP keeps going down on both of us because we keep uh, attacking. Um, but I managed to avoid its attack this time. So I took no damage on this turn, which is pretty cool because I'm going to live a little longer and hopefully outlast this enemy. So I'll use full Minorb one more time. Now you can see that I don't have enough energy to use it again, so it's not highlighted for me. So my only option is to use Mage Bolt now because I don't have any extra spells. But luckily for me, my full Minorb managed to stun the enemy because it's electrical. So I'm going to use Mage Bolt and hopefully finish off this enemy in a few more clicks. Maybe finish it off with one more full Minorb. There you go and there you can see that i've gained 4 xp so i'm max level so um that's not going to really benefit me at the moment it will keep counting up for when the max level has increased and then it'll grant it to me 
um, but for you guys it'll start getting your character up to where the point you can pick your profession uh, go into that caster or a fighter and start doing some quests so we'll head over and we'll start doing another encounter and we'll see what the next reward is for this one so this time i've got a cinder thief so it's level seven it's got a little less xp but it's fire instead of snow this time so it's already attacked me i'm going to use a full orb on it it's stunned and it's done 13 damage just getting a little cold there because i'm off making my video i just use mage bolt i'll use mage bolt again i'll swap over to full orb again i'll hit it with a couple of times like that i love my full orb with the chance to stun on there and i'll finish it off with just the mage bolt all right so this time i've got four xp but I've also got myself 0.06 skill. So that's a real token that you can actually swap on Alcor. You can also use it to craft things like weapons and skills through Nefty Block Blends, which is really cool. The training staff is actually one that's been blended up um, through Nefty Blocks and it rolled out to pretty good stats. Um, and it's really served me well through my quests. So one more encounter. We'll see what this one gives. So another Snow Slime this time. I'll smack it with my first Fullman Orb do it again one more time oh no stun this time but i'll do a basic attack a couple of times get that energy back up i'll use my full orb again a couple of times oh 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 no stun but it did crit a couple of times so that's pretty good all right so that's the that's the basic encounter so that's what you're going to be doing most of the time like i said all those clicks are off chain so you'll see that there's no authorization pop-ups it does save the progress but it doesn't necessarily cost your cpu which is great because you can sit here and like i said i clicked for hours on that weekend i just grinded really hard didn't have to worry about that cpu got myself up to a high enough level so that if i head back over to the main menu you'll be able to see this quest feature here i started to be able to give myself some quests which was pretty fun um, the quests are, like I said, a series of random encounters with a little bit of story tied in, where at the end you get rewards um, like more guild, like we saw just then, um, chests that you can open that can give you things like scale, uh, skill tokens that you can blend towards getting yourself a skill without having to go buy it. Um, so yeah, it's really fun. Like I said, it doesn't use CPU. You can sit and grind it for as long as you want. You get a little bit of extra story. Like, it's not a game that's going to make you a millionaire overnight, but it is made by a trusted developer. It does roll out updates. Um, I've had a lot of fun playing it and theory crafting about builds and things along with other people in Discord. So if you want something to do, you haven't got a lot of wax spare, but you want to be able to have a little bit more fun with your clicks, then yeah, definitely give it a go. Head on over to the Discord, say hi, get yourself that beta pass and jump in and start playing. But for now, that's all I've got to say about it, and I'll see you next time.